Okay, so it's time to put it all together. Let's talk about analyzing an IR spectrum. Now, the author of our textbook uh, makes a claim with which I'm going to humbly disagree. He says that often the molecular structure can be identified from IR spectra. And I'm going to say uh, that may be true for a professional chemist. But for us, and I mean, I don't mean you can't handle it, I'm only saying this is an introductory class, we are going to be using spectra to gather information to put with other information to identify compounds, right? So, um, so you really need to relax. I mentioned that. It's not just a throwaway comment, though. I want you to know that, that we are going to take IR spectra. We're going to look for information in it, and there's going to be some stuff in there that we can't even get, like the fingerprint region, right? So first of all, I want you to focus on the diagnostic region uh, that is above the 1500, right? Below is the fingerprint region, right? So we're going to look for double bonds at 1700. Carbon, uh, we're going to look for, I'm sorry, at 1700, we're going to look for carbon oxygen double bonds, but then we're also going to be looking for carbon carbon double bonds and carbon nitrogen double bonds, right? In that 1600 to 1850 region. Then we're going to check for triple bonds there, and then we're going to check for, uh, for hydrogen, now, these aren't hydrogen bonds, but blank hydrogen bonds in the 3000 to 4000, right? We're going to analyze wave number, intensity, and shape for each signal. And, uh, and then we're going to fix um, meaning as we can. Okay, so again, I already said we're, gonna, we're not going to identify it with the spectra. We're going to use it, the information. Now, the second thing we do is when we look at this 27 to 4,000, 2700 to 4,000 range, we draw a line at 3,000 and we focus on the signals that come above it, okay? Because these below it are generally this, the CHs, and virtually everything we're dealing with has got some sp3 hybridized carbons with hydrogens bonded to it, and that's what this is right here. But above that, we're going to get some interesting stuff. We're going to get alkenyl, right, hydrogens right there. We're going to get alkynyl hydrogens right here. We're going to get amino hydrogens here, right? And then we're going to get hydroxyl hydrogens up even further. Um, actually, we're going to see those down, right? We're going to, this is, that's sort of the range we're going to see those in. Of course, it's not going to be exactly at those points. All right, and finally, to, I uh, would like to close this video out with um, pointing out that we're always going to have access to a table. This is not something you need to memorize. Uh, but when you point some things out, we've discussed, I think, almost uh, ad, ad nauseum, right? That, that OHs are going to absorb somewhere around 3,400, right? Carbonyls are going to um, absorb at 1,700. Look at that, all those carbonyls at 1,700, okay? And uh, double bonds are going, triple bonds are going to be there, right? Um, and the CHs are going to be there. Alkenyls are going to be here, right? So this is a table that you'll always have with you. It's really going to help you if you practice, practice, practice. Have this table in front of you and use it as your friend. And by the time you get to the exam, you're going to feel like it's an open book test. All right. Good luck. Go practice.